What exactly are angels? Hi, and welcome to the Director's Cuts here at Regal Heights Church on our series on the book of Hebrews. So angels came up on Sunday, uh, our sermon that was based upon Hebrews chapter 1. And instead of doing daily devotionals, we're going to be doing three Director's Cuts, which is the add-ons, the fill-ins that you didn't get to see in the real movie on Sunday, uh, are going to be filled in here. So I wanted to give you a, little, a quick uh, three-minute uh, message on exactly what are angels. Angels are ministering spirits. They are spirits, meaning that they are not made out of uh, the atoms that you see on a periodic table. However, they can take form uh, as they so desire. So they can take physical form, but they are spirit in nature. They have a hierarchy. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about there are different levels and different commands of them. It teaches that they are innumerable. That doesn't mean that they're uh, eternal in number. It just means that they're too many to count, but there is a limited number of them. On top of that, there is a, a group of fallen angels, angels that have rebelled against God that we now call demons. These are spirits who are bent on destruction and the progression of Satan's values of evil and immorality uh, and everything that is blasphemous on the earth. They are likely behind. They are also numerous, but not more numerous and certainly not more powerful than the holy angels. That's why they were thrown out of heaven in the first place and defeated. They will ultimately be defeated uh, fully in the end and thrown into hell forever. But I just wanted to get you the grips on understanding that angels aren't uh, uh, equal in the sense of their roles. They have different, uh, I'm like, we can get into a whole sermon on exactly all their hierarchy and their command structure. But I wanted to highlight today is that angels are powerful. We should not underestimate angels. We don't worship them. They stay incognito because they want all the glory to go to God and not themselves, but they are still very powerful. I'll give you one example out of the Old Testament. As a wicked uh, king was sending his army against Israel, they had 185,000 foot soldiers. And the king in Israel cried out to God for relief because his army was not strong enough to go against. So then what happened is in the middle of the night, God sent one angel to go and wreak judgment on that army. And in one night, 185,000 soldiers were killed by that angel. Now, that might sound disconcerting to us, but we need to understand that God is a very serious God. He is very gracious to us, but when he acts in judgment, you don't want to be there. We need to take him seriously, and his judgments are righteous and right. So what happened on that night was warranted. On top of that, it's important to know that 185,000 by one angel, just to get in perspective how difficult that would be from a human perspective, let's say the angels are unionized. So this guy has an eight-hour night shift. Then he has a half hour mandated for lunch and he has two 15 minute breaks at the different four hour marks. If you divided that uh, seven hours up amongst 185,000, you would have uh, 6.777 soldiers that were killed every second by an angel for that seven hour stretch. Now you can imagine one of your favorite movies in a battle scene of a guy going with a sword and kind of taking out a whole army. Imagine 6.777 soldiers every second for seven hours. Uh, unreal. I doubt that's exactly the way it happened. That might be the reason why we call it a graveyard shift, but we don't know exactly what methods the uh, angel used. Was it sword or was it just one magnificent burst of power? Uh, we don't know. But I wanted to give you that as a perspective to understand that angels are not to be trifled with. Uh, we are not to worship them, nor are we to call upon them. We call upon God and pray to him and he will dispatch to us the angels we need to help. They will almost always be uh, under the radar and unknown. And then we pray that God will protect us from uh, the demonic forces of the devil because we want to be protected from those powerful beings as well. I hope this gives you a greater glimpse into uh, the Sunday sermon. I hope you enjoyed the director's cuts. There's more to come. God bless you and have a great day. Uh -huh.